My definition of leadership is that leadership is like love. Everybody's born with it, with the capability of it, and you can even fall into it. But at the end of the day, it's a choice that you make. It's a step that you take to embrace it. Wherever people come together to accomplish anything, um, whether it be build the building that we're in here, um, or build an entire city, that cannot be done without leadership. So really, wherever I look, I see leadership. I try to recognize that and appreciate it. And I don't think we're born with any kind of innate trait that you know, makes a person necessarily a better leader than the next. It's really hard work and a big learning curve that makes a person a leader. There are always roadblocks, I think, that, are, that occur no matter what activity it is, there's going to be something that comes up, a fire will need to be put out. And as long as you have faith, trust, and confidence in what you're doing, and the people around you have the same in you, then that's going to give you a lot of that fuel that's necessary to effectively put out the fire. I don't always do the popular thing, but at the end of the day, sometimes the right thing is the unpopular thing. When it comes to something that is, is kind of questionable, um, maybe morally questionable, and everybody's doing it, um, then for me, I feel it's like it's a moral obligation as a leader to say no. I kind of you know take that moral high ground and stand up for what is right. When I was in sixth grade, there was a class that was divided in the middle. I was, had my sixth grade class, and then on the other side of the divider was the uh, special education class. What would end up happening every single lunch period is you would have some of the, the special education kids come into the, the cafeteria and they'd sit at a certain table each day. When they decided to start integrating this, uh, this class, and we had the sixth grade class and the special ed class with the divider, they would open up the wall and we would start doing activities and kind of be more inclusive with them. And that did something to me to where I started to kind of recognize, become a little bit more self-aware, I guess, of the situation that was going on in the lunchroom because I didn't really understand it. I'm like, this isn't right, you know, they're always sitting by themselves, always. And I kept thinking about it, like, I should go sit with them. But I'm sitting with all of my friends at the table that's filled, right? That's the popular thing to do. And it's not popular to go and sit with the special ed kids who always sit by themselves. One day I decided to make that decision and go sit with um, the, the special ed kids at lunch. I made a point to do that at least a few times a week. And I was the only one to do it, but soon after that, there was another you know, kid in the class, and he was a popular kid. He was, more, he was cooler than I was. He started doing the same thing. And it became more acceptable after that to simply integrate and associate with other kids who were different. So you sacrifice some idiosyncratic credit in the short term, but then you end up gaining it back in the long term because people realize, wow, that was the right decision, and I respect this guy for it. Find that rock, that role model, that mentor, and learn as much as you can from them. When the time is right, you'll have the same opportunities that they have to, to learn and develop yourself as a leader.